so if I can uh, pass over now to Valeria Setti, who is going to give us um, an opinion on the, the position and the role of the child in all of this. Yes, thank you, Alice, and thank you for the invitation uh, today. Um, I'm the Commission Coordinator for the Rights of the Child, so um, I do represent the European Commission, but uh, I will uh, try to uh, bring in the perspective of the children or to speak on behalf of, of children today. Um, and of course, I'd like to um, reflect upon the issue of equity and equality, but also upon the issue of participatory approach that Chris also um, introduced earlier on. So uh, in, in the very few minutes I want, I want to take, I, I'll try to make four points. The first one, uh, which is um, the main point of departure of my whole intervention today, which is the right of every child to the highest attainable standard of health. And this is a right that is enshrined in international law in the United Nations Convention for the Rights of the Child and to which all of the EU member states and the vast, vast majority of countries in the world are part to. So there is a set of rights that children, and by children I mean all the population from zero to 18 years old globally, so almost uh, a little bit over actually 30% of the world population fall into this category. Um, there is a specific set of rights that children have and are entitled to exactly because they are children. And there is a specific set of, um, of obligations that authorities and governments have towards this group of the population. So let us start from um, this particular right that children have, that every child have to the highest attainable standard of health. And um, if we analyze a little bit further the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, uh, we also see that there are specific areas of focus that are mentioned, like, for instance, uh, uh, decreasing child mortality or focus on preventative and primary health care, nutrition, but also actually on the right to access education and knowledge around health for all segments of societies, including children. So this is really very much um, the departing point of what I want to share today, which is every child, no matter their age, their gender, their background, origin, socioeconomic status has uh, this specific right. But we, of course, know, and this is uh, the second point I want to share, that often children, and especially children from disadvantaged backgrounds, don't see this right fulfilled. Um, in the European Union today, almost one in four children live at risk of poverty or social exclusions. It's a staggering uh, percentage. We, of course, know that there are specific groups of children um, that face specific challenges in accessing healthcare, uh, being children uh, who are undocumented or migrant and refugee children, um, children in care, um, children from particular minority groups. So, so it is definitely um, uh, an issue where we still have a long way to go in terms of fulfilling the right to the highest uh, attainable standard of health healthcare for every child. And the third point I'd like to share is that um, healthcare, as many public policies, if not virtually all other public policies, is often designed for adults and by adults. And um, even though, of course, there are services that are primarily targeting children, uh, these are not often designed together with children themselves. And, and this is where I want to link up with the participatory approach uh, that was mentioned before. And, and Chris, you mentioned specifically uh, the 18 to 28 population and also specifically the issue of mental health. Um, which is something I also want to, to spend a few words on. We know that children and young people have been um, signaling mental health as one of their main concerns for a long time, even before the pandemic um, hit. 
And we know that mental health in general, it's a bit of a taboo issue or it, it, it's coming, uh, let's say, more to the uh, attention and to the bigger agenda. But children's mental health is even more so um, a taboo issue. And it's not something that um, we've been able to actually interact with children a lot about. And we've seen uh, how the pandemic has, of course, impacted the mental health of many uh, children and young people. And as I said, children have been telling us for a long time, this is an issue we want to tackle. This is an issue for us. And as European Commission, we have earlier this year um, adopted the EU strategy for the rights of the child, which is the first uh, comprehensive policy framework at European Union level that looks at all policy areas at um, that uh, have um, all policy areas where the Commission is active and that have an impact on child rights and brings them together under a comprehensive um, uh, policy framework. And ahead of the EU strategy on the rights of the child, we have conducted a massive consultation with children, thanks to a lot of um, child rights organizations including UNICEF and I think uh, Eurochild and UNICEF. And I think Jana from, from Eurochild might say something uh, about it a little bit later on. And children have really brought forward the issue of mental health as one of the topics they wanted the new EU strategy to address. And so this brings me to, to my final point um, uh, today, which is for the very first time in a um, European Commission policy framework that really looked specifically at the fulfillment at the protection and the promotion of child rights, the dimension of healthcare is very, very strong. Under um, the second of the six thematic priorities of the EU strategy, uh, we look at how through EU um, work we can help ensuring the rights of every child to healthcare. And we also have a particular focus on mental health. So there are four actually areas that um, on which the European Commission intends to work in the coming years that are specific to children and health. And one is mental health, I've mentioned it already. The second is uh, combating cancer. The third is uh, vaccinations. And the fourth is um, nutrition. So these will be four focus uh, topics on which the European Commission work will concentrate uh, for the coming years when it comes to health and children. But I think really to, to, to conclude and to, and to stress the importance of the participation of children in the strategy throughout, as I said, we put forward actions and priorities that really were suggested uh, by children themselves. And we have a whole focus on child participation to the decision-making processes. We want as European Commission to be doing in the future more of our policies and legislation that have an impact on children together with children. It is possible, it is uh, doable. We've done it and a lot of other organizations do it. And so for the really, if I could uh, end on a, on a call, uh, for all of us is to consider uh, this participatory approach from before actually um, the age of majority, let's say, and, uh, and not only to consider young adults, but to really think of how we can design public policies together with children on how we can um, shape healthcare uh, for children's needs and in order to fulfill children's rights, and also in how we can communicate about our health issues and uh, about healthcare policies to children in an age appropriate and accessible way. Thank you very much. I'll stop here. Thank you so much, Valeria. Uh, that was uh, uh, very interesting and a completely different dimension to the ones that we've been talking about so far.